Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, today we will continue uh, talking about Lorentz transformation and its effect on time, which we did discuss before uh, when talking about time measuring lecture, just before the Lorentz transformation. But now, equipped with Lorentz transformation, we will try to derive basically the same formula, but more mathematically or theoretically, whatever you want to call, to call it. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All, presented on unizor.com. On the same website, um, you can find two prerequisite courses, Math for Teens and Physics for Teens. Um, now, obviously, both mathematical and uh, physical knowledge are mandatory to understand theory of relativity, so um, either you take those courses or maybe you have already um, in possession of the proper knowledge of math and physics, um, but in any case these are prerequisites which are available on the website. Also every lecture on this website, well including this one of course, um, have a very detailed textual notes which basically like a textbook uh, so you have at the same time the video presentation and the part of the textbook, if you wish, related to this particular um, lecture. And whatever maybe I'm, I might miss something during the lecture, then I'll put it in, in the notes. But basically they're supposed to be about the same thing, obviously. Now, also the website contains some um, educational functionality, for example, uh, you can take exams as many times as you want. There are some problem solving um, exercises and uh, also there is a provision for supervisory study. So if you are um, basically given some kind of an assignment by a teacher or a supervisor or a parent, if, you, if it's a self-study for example, <coughs> then it can be arranged uh, through this functionality of the website. And the uh, website is completely free, there are no advertisement, no strings attached. Um, sign on is uh, optional and there is no information except maybe the name and the password if you want to, but you can be completely um, anonymous and take the whole course without any kind of signing in if you don't want to. Signing in is actually necessary for this functional uh, provisions like if you have a supervisor then you need basically to arrange the relationship between you and supervisor and that's why both have to sign in but just for self-study without any kind of you know restrictions you can just go and do whatever ne is necessary okay back to time now let's consider we have two inertial systems one will be called alpha. I will put only one space coordinate x. Uh, y and z coordinates will not be important because they will be completely the same in both this system and another system which I call beta. I will use lower cases for beta. And beta is moving with the speed v along the x-axis of alpha um, with retaining the parallelism of all the um, axes and at time t is equal to t is equal to zero um, alpha coincides beta completely so the zero at, at moment of time zero they are uh, exactly um, overlap each other. <coughs> but in any case, before and after the time zero, beta is moving towards the um, uh, x axis, uh, along the x axis of, of, of alpha. Okay, at the same time you can say that its alpha is moving along the x axis of beta with the speed minus v, right? So alpha also moves with the speed minus v relative to beta. So it's all relative, it's all symmetrical, so to speak. Now, 
in the lecture which uh, which was called time measuring we considered a light clock in the beta system which basically sent the light from uh, one particular point uh, up to the mirror and let's say the length of this distance is r and the mirror is reflecting back and we accept this beam of light at the same point now this is all happening in the beta system so the point is not moving anywhere um, the mirror is not moving anywhere they are um, stationary in the beta system <coughs> and the time of this experiment from sending the beam of light up to the mirror and back this is a time of is a certain duration which we have measured basically as 2r divided by c right that was our timing of the event 2r because the speed of light is c and the distance is r to the mirror and r back everything is stationary so nothing is moving everything is exactly the same and that what we called a timing for the beta observer in the beta system because it's a beta system it's a lowercase t and it's a beta observer that's why the beta is here at the same time we were trying to evaluate time of alpha observer of the same beta event or beta process beta experiment and we have found we have found this formula where gamma is 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared v is the speed now if you don't remember how we obtained this formula you you can obviously go back to this lecture it's called time measuring and uh, and you will see that that's basically uh, the formula which we obtain analyzing how this beam of light is going to the mirror and back from a uh, perspective of alpha observer because since beta is moving so what alpha is seeing actually the beam of light goes this and then this since beta is moving and uh, basically calculating whatever the distance is we came up with this formula okay fine being as it may now we are equipped with a little bit more I would, I would say um, mathematical and theoretical tool called Lorentz transformation so we have come up with the transformation of coordinates between two systems like this alpha and beta and this transformation looks that was a previous lecture actually this transformation looks like this if we are talking about um, using alpha coordinates um, as the base and you would like to find out what the beta coordinates look like that would be the formula like this x minus vt divided by square root of 1 minus v square c square and t so lowercase x and lowercase t are prerogative of beta system uppercase x and uppercase t are uh, the alpha system and that would be t minus v x divided by c square divided by the same square root so this is the Lorentz transformation which we have derived in the previous lecture how to obtain the coordinates of something in the beta system if we know the coordinates and time by the way in the alpha system time obviously is important because as the time goes by beta system is moving and that's why the same point in alpha for example would have different coordinates in beta as the time goes on right now obviously this E is completely inversible 
because of this. If beta is moving with the speed v relative to alpha, alpha is moving with the speed v relative to beta, which means we can all reverse this just changing v to minus v and we will have x is equal to lowercase plus in this case v and lowercase t divided by the same square root and capital T is equal to also to v change to minus v it would be 2 t plus uh, sorry lowercase t uh, v lowercase x square divided by the same square root okay so these are mutually symmetrical transformation from space and time coordinates of one system into space and time coordinates of another system all right so that's done this has been covered already and now my purpose is to use this very powerful apparatus to basically evaluate how the time is changing the time the duration of time um, is, is changing from one system into another basically not repeating the same logical well I would say experimental kind of logic which we were using in the lecture time measuring when we came up with this uh, relationship I'm talking about this one so the duration at uh, alpha system of the event which is happening in beta system would be by gamma where gamma is 1 over the square root um, would be greater by the way this is less than 1 so 1 over square root would be greater than 1 so the gamma is increasing uh, factor so uh, capital T beta would be greater than lowercase the proper time the, the time where event actually is happening is always the smallest and in any other frame that would be greater okay so now let's again use this system and again we will consider that there is some um, well experiment actually if you wish doesn't really matter right now we're not talking about light clock or anything uh, like this any kind of a process any kind of an experiment is conducted in the beta system so it's local to beta it's basically everything is at rest in the beta system but the entire beta system is moving relative to alpha so let's consider that at some point at some point let's call it x0 in the beta system it's a fixed point at rest not moving we conduct certain experiment it takes time from t begin to t end so my space coordinate is the same during this experiment i'm just standing at point x0 and conducting experiment which takes some time now my question is if i observe this particular experiment from the alpha system how long will it take all right well we do have basically uh, two different um, two different uh, coordinates t uh, x0 and t begin that's one uh, space-time point and another is x0 t end <coughs> so x0 is x t begin or t end is the t lowercase t and uh, all I have to do is substitute into these formulas to get correspondingly x0 and and t begin 
I would rather put it X begin because I'm not really sure whether that would be the same. And X end, T end. So from these two, I have to convert into these two somehow. Okay, so let's do, just do the first one. And I will use these formulas. So x begin equals x0 plus v t begin divided by well, if you don't mind, let me just multiply by gamma, so it would be where gamma is 1 over the square root. Same thing as this. Now, and t begin, that's the time experiment begins. I will use this formula which is gamma times t begin plus v x0 divided by c square. Okay, good. Now, let's do conversion of the end of the event in one system into another. So we will have x end equals to exactly the same formula. X, x zero we still have. Plus v t end. And t end is equal to gamma all t end plus v x zero divided by c square. Okay. So I have an end, I have a begin, I have an end, I have a begin. So in space coordinates and in time coordinates. So what follows is my duration delta t. That's the duration of the whole experiment in the alpha system from t end to t begin. Well, obviously, this thing will cancel out, and I will have gamma t end minus t begin, which is equal to gamma delta t, where delta t is duration of the event in the beta system, and delta t capital is the duration in the alpha system, which corresponds completely to this formula. So we have derived the same formula, kind of good confirmation. I mean, if you have derived to the same formula from two different theories, that's always good, right? So we have done that. Now, what's interesting is, let's compare the uh, space coordinates. You see, space coordinates are different now. And what's the difference? delta x is equal to, if we will subtract from this this, gamma tam times x0 will cancel out, but this one will not. It will be gamma times v times t end minus t begin, which is delta t. So as you see, the experiment, which is uh, at rest, basically, at point lowercase x0 in the beta system, obviously it's just there. We are moving with, we, we are within the beta system and observe this experiment. It stands still. The time goes by, but the, but the location is not. But it's, if you view it from the uh, alpha frame, uh, that the beginning and the ending of the experiment will be in two different space locations. Well, why? Because during the time delta t, while experiment is moving, the whole system will move by v, by the speed v. So that would be the distance. And then there is still this factor gamma, which means that there is, this is a relativistic effect, actually, which, you know, kind of maybe not, not exactly uh, considered as, as, as obvious. Uh, and it's not obvious, 
So the presence of this denominator is definitely not obvious, and this is the achievement of the relativistic theory, um, which basically added this particular factor to make the whole thing much more precise. If the speed v is very, very low relative to speed of light c, then we don't feel this. So the gamma would be very, very close to, 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 to 1. And that's why experiments of 19th century didn't really show any kind of um, problem. But more precise experiments proved that this is the right way to do it. And uh, so the relativistic approach was many times confirmed experimentally, not only through the theory which we kind of built ourselves. So that's an interesting point, obviously. Uh, and again, as I was saying, we were just using the Lorentz transformation to uh, confirm that the time actually is perceived differently by the person which is in the local beta system where experiment is conducted actually and stands still and by the person who is in another inertial time frame system um, which well you can say moves relative to this one or this more relative to that one doesn't really matter but in any case there is definitely a speed v plus or minus whatever you want to consider it um, so if there is such a speed that the time is perceived differently and the, sm the shortest uh, per per perceived time is uh, the proper one the, by the observer which is local to the experiment which we are talking about, the process, the timing of which we are measuring. Well, that's it. Uh, I would suggest you to read uh, the notes for this lecture. So you go to unisor.com, choose the course called Relativity for All. And uh, in this course, there is a, like a part called Einstein View. And this lecture is in that particular um, part of the course. So thank you very much and good luck.